Hello everyone and welcome to this podcast from the Centre of Sustainable Architecture with Wood at the University of Tasmania. Um, my name is Greg Nolan and today I'd like to discuss some primary environmental characteristics about timber. So there's three major points when we look at wood. Uh, the first is that wood is a, a natural material, then we've got to look at it as a renewable material and lastly we want to look at it as a carbon friendly material. Now what underlies this discussion then is uh, the whole concept of sustainable development which is how as a human society can we continue to do the things that we want that will benefit us and use mainly sustainable resources to allow us to do that. And fundamentally if we're going to do that we're going to need to use renewable resources um, for whatever we wish to do. So if we look at the concept of renewable resources, they really only come from two major types. The first major type is things that come from natural forces, such as the sun and the wind and waves. The next type of renewable material, and the one, the category in which wood fits, is things that we grow. And we want to be able to then grow this, these renewable resources to enable us to satisfy the needs that we have to live comfortable lives. So if we look back at our three major points, um, natural, renewable and carbon friendly, and we look at each of those in detail. I'm standing here in a small reserve in the middle of the University of Tasmania's campus in Hobart. I'm surrounded by trees. Even if I was standing in a plantation, the trees are growing in response to the local environment in which they find themselves and also in response to the genetic makeup of the tree itself. So the wood that we get out of the tree, if we harvest that tree, is then determined by the genetics of the tree and by the characteristics of the place in which the tree was grown. It's life in that place. And so when we look at wood, we'll find that there's a range of natural characteristics through the material which a testament to the tree's life from which we've drawn that wood. So wood's natural. The second is renewable. As I mentioned previously, renewable things are things that we grow, but they're also called conditionally renewable. That means we can't just do anything we want and they'll still be there. We can only really use them at the rate in which we can regrow them successfully. So wood then is a renewable material, but with that big condition. We've got to harvest it and use it at a rate that's less than the rate in which we are regrowing it. Because if we want to use more wood and more renewable products, we've actually got to allow both the time and the space for those things to regrow. The third is that wood is a carbon friendly material. Wood as it grows is made up primarily of half atmospheric carbon and half of other materials. So this piece of timber here, 50% of this material by weight is made up of atmospheric carbon. Um, that's embedded in the molecules that make up the wood itself. So when we use this material, we're taking that atmospheric carbon and we are making our buildings and our other artifacts out of that atmospheric carbon. And it's interesting if we actually do a, detail, a comparison of two elements. And I've got two elements here. I've got a steel element. This is a 150 by 75 steel I-beam. And this timber element here. This is a 240 by 85 piece of glue laminated hardwood material. So there's a lot of commonalities between these two, two pieces. They're the same length they have about the same weight. This is about 4.5 kilos, this is about 4.4, 4.3 kilos. So these pieces have been selected to have exactly the same bending stiffness. That means if we used either of these in a floor, then they'd be interchangeable. This one isn't as high as this one, so this one's a bit bigger. They weigh about the same, but the difference really we can see is if we look at the amount of carbon that is either stored or released by using these two things in a design. With this piece, we're going to end up storing 
about 1.4 kilograms of atmospheric carbon for each piece this big. Now that includes the amount of atmospheric carbon that's in the piece, but also allows for the amount of carbon that might be released by making this piece and by using the glue and transporting the material to sites. With this piece of steel, we're going to have to use a lot of carbon and other fossil fuels to manufacture this piece of steel. So when we look at this, we can see that the amount of carbon that we're releasing is about 1.5 kilograms of carbon. So between the two, we release 1.5 kilograms of carbon into the atmosphere by using the steel. With this piece, we actually store 1.4 kilograms of atmospheric carbon in the building if we use this piece. So we've got a difference there of 2.9 kilograms of carbon just in each of these individual lengths to achieve exactly the same stiffness in our floor. And if we looked at that in CO2 equivalents, it works out at about 10 kilograms of CO2 for this length, or if we went per lineal metre, our difference is about 34 kilograms per lineal metre. Each decision where we choose this material over that one, we're 34 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions better off. So we can see that if we're using wood, we're basically using a carbon friendly material. So in summary, if we look at wood, we can see that A, it's, it's natural, it comes out of natural materials such as trees. It's renewable. Conditionally, we've got to make sure that we're regrowing the material back at the rate or more than at the rate in which we're using the material. And third, it's carbon friendly. By picking wood, we are both avoiding the emissions of other materials and we can store atmospheric carbon in our buildings. Thank you. I hope that was of interest.